Good afternoon, Valley City State University students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends of the institution. Welcome to our second Senior Artist Podcast. Today, we have a special guest, Jared Gromish, who will be talking about his exhibition, Drawn In. He is our second digital design major. So, Jared, take it away. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm Jared Grumish, and this is my presentation on my senior art show, Drawn In. So a little about me, I'm originally from Castleton, North Dakota, just west of Fargo. I took interest in music starting in elementary school and took band classes all the way through middle and high school. I also took art classes throughout high school, mainly painting, but I also did a lot of drawing. I didn't know what I wanted to do going to college, so I came to Valley City at first to get my generals out of the way, uh, stay close to home, and see what uh, generally interested me. In my sophomore year, I learned about the di new digital design major and decided to give it the good old college try, and needless to say, I found it pretty captivating. Before heading into my show, though, I wanted to take some time and look at a few of my works that I've done over the past few years that have led me to where I am now. Starting off, I learned a lot about graphic design here, and over my time, I've gotten to work with different businesses and organizations in Valley City. I had the opportunity to work with the Bridges Art Council and the Valley City Barnes County Public Library. I learned about different types of logos and how elements like different typefaces and fonts give their own identity to projects. Working with people has also been an engaging learning experience. Finding out the motivation behind a group and their message are just kind of part of what's considered when making logos. But there is more to digital design than just making logos, such as learning the programs that we would use to create. I've always heard about programs like Photoshop before, but I'd never actually used it. And I originally thought it was only used for editing photos to make me look like David Hasselhoff. And while that is one of the main uses, people, I found that people use it for more than just editing photographs. I found artists using the endless brushes to paint and about creating advertisements for products using color and brushes to create artificial light sources, and even learning how to combine multiple images into one so I can make as many clones of myself as I want. <laughs> and alongside Photoshop was Adobe Illustrator, which I used to make gradients and easily organize and manipulate text like the long list poster here. Next to that is the image of, of my, uh, some of my work at the Times Record here in Valley City, both focused on organizing text and making sure a large amount of words were placed in an understandable format. I've always loved organizing, and as a kid, I'd ride in the grocery cart and I'd be organizing cereal boxes and whatever else my mom put in the cart as we were shopping. So organizing text to me is almost like playing Tetris. Besides the programs, I got to learn the other side, big part of, the, of design, which is the production side. I learned about the different ways of printing designs and even got to try screen and heat printing and to keep it simple, you can see a diagram on the right, which is a simple depiction of the screen printing process. I'd compare it to a more complex version of a stamp, only with screen printing, there's a lot more that can go wrong. Uh, a quick example being the alignment, because when you're printing multiple colors onto one work, you need to make sure that all those colors are lining up. Because of this, you can see how a screen printing design includes these targets in the corners, which makes lining things up a lot easier. Overall, the process can be tedious, but it's cool to see the image come together with each color. So you can see from the left to right the original design, the first few colors being put on, and then the final product with all the colors added. From there, it's as easy as trimming to get rid of all the guides on the outside. Moving into my senior year, I got to work with the VCSU marketing department and started leaning into how I can apply my interests in, out into the real world. I made illustrations of various objects for different departments and majors offered here. I learned about using texture and brushes, how to make sure text was readable, keeping in mind how a viewer takes in information, and especially working with other people and getting feedback. One of the main ideas I kept coming back to, though, was using my drawings or illustrations and seeing how I could use them to make things like t-shirts. I got to make this one into a t-shirt using heat press to transfer the design from paper to a shirt. I liked learning the ways of bringing my designs into the real world, even when they were very tedious processes like screen printing. It removes that gap in my mind of seeing something online and then wondering how people got it out into the real world. 
ever since I started taking design classes, I started noticing a lot more about designs in the real world with logos and other elements I may have never even thought of considering before. Learning about graphic design, the design programs, and illustrating, I started to kind of get an idea of what I enjoyed to make. Now looking toward my art show, I began to think about my inspiration and how I could further use illustrations and drawings in design. When I first, when I was thinking of my inspiration, I thought of all the different artists that I follow online, one of which is Blake Stevenson. He is an illustrator and his works have always caught my attention. He posts a lot of his process works from sketches to line, line work to full color creations, but he also has these simple black and white logos and designs which, that he makes which I really resonate a lot with. I enjoy the cartoon rubber hose feel of his drawings and you can really pick apart a lot of his illustrations and all the little details from the mushrooms on the stairs to just following the ghost tail up back into the keyhole. And from the logos, you can really get the sense of control with positive and negative space, even leading to a sense of depth in the Creative South logo. My second inspiration is Scott Benson, who I've followed since 2017. He has always interested me with his character designs and how he interprets animals and humans. He uses these simple shapes to exaggerate aspects of a character, like the roundness of a person or the eyes of animals. He was a big inspiration for the tarot card project featured in my show and was one of the main inspirations for my interest in illustration in the first place. So looking at the works of my show, I wanted to focus on my drawing and illustrating, as well as look at a bit of animating and photo editing. I named The name Drawn In itself is both a reference to my work and how I came to Valley City looking for what I wanted to pursue and learning about the digital design program. My landscape painting was originally a project focused on using Photoshop brushes to recreate an image, but focus on giving a unique texture to the colors and the tones of the piece. I feel you can really see the, you can see that in the grass up close and in some of the mist at the bottom of the mountains. I wanted to make sure that I got all the colors correct and blended them smoothly, which is why I think that uh, it turned out so realistic compared to the inspiration image. This is the first time I'd actually painted in Photoshop and there was really just an endless amount of brushes and when it comes to choosing the texture of a brush, the size, the flow, and everything. It's just all fully customizable and the options are really endless. This was part of my personal research studio and I thought I'd include just a little bit about the process of making illustration. With my favorite illustration projects, I've always had the best results when taking directly from drawings. Sometimes a drawing just gets a whole new feeling if you try to create it on a tablet right away. I think that drawing it and transferring it onto a computer and then experimenting with brushes can more easily transfer that texture and the feeling of something that's hand drawn. I also like having patterns and details that you can pull apart and look at individually, like my inspiration, Blake Stevenson. My tarot cards were initially part of my first digital illustration class and were the start of my exploration in illustrating. We were tasked with creating a hand drawn visual style and use it to create a full set of 22 tarot cards. This was one of my favorite projects I worked on and I wanted to make it one of the highlights of my show. So when I was figuring out how, I, how to further my illustrations, I visited a traveling art exhibition here at VCSU and the artist was using this program I'd never heard of called Art of Vive. I learned I could make the animations for my cards and then have them be the, in an interactive work at my show. Art of Vive allowed me to link an animation to the work and turn the design into a QR code of sorts. Mm -hmm. So now anyone can download the Art of Vive app, scan one of the posters like a QR code, and they can watch the work come to life in augmented reality, which is really cool. I felt I could come up with some neat ideas that can add to the theme of tarot cards. Adding some simple effects in motion go also go a long way with giving that extra kick of interactivity. I found it ties in well with my art statement, having the designs themselves grab your attention and the animation being that extra kick of interactivity and visual stimulus. Okay, now all I needed to do was animate all 22 cards. So looking at the process for my work, I started by opening the design in Illustrator and I then split the design into its respective parts that I wanted to animate by putting each part on its own layer. The layers in Adobe products are the simple way of stacking things on top of each other. So you can see in the video that the background, the border, and the center of the design are all on the bottom layer while everything else is stacked on top of it. Since I wanted to animate each footprint appearing on, 
uh, this card, each one of them had to be on their own layer. And then after, oops, okay. I'm trying to scroll through here. <laughs> being really stuttery. <laughs> see if I can get back up to where I was. Okay. So then after everything's on its own layer, I can then switch over to After Effects here, which I do. And the first thing I'm going to do is import the work as a composition rather than just an image. If I imported it as a composition, I can then maintain those layers that I set up inside Illustrator. Let me skip forward a little bit. Once I've imported all of the layers, you can see them there on the left, I will highlight them and drag them down into the After Effects timeline. And the timeline is just the area where I can see the layers and manipulate when they appear and disappear, as well as change their position inside the video. Some animations, I can even add special effects to them to give them more clear things like motion. And then after putting the layers into the workspace, I make sure that they are still layered correctly. And so you can see that the background border and the middle design are still grouped at the bottom. And you can see that I can turn off the layers and make the footprints appear and disappear whenever I want. But now I have to make the, in the layer appear when I want it to in the video automatically. And for this animation, I didn't want the footprints to simply pop into existence. Instead, I wanted I use some keyframes to gradually fade in each footprint. And skip forward. The keyframes uh, allow me to tell a layer what to do at certain times in the animation, so it just automates it for me. The result is that over one or two seconds, the footprint will gradually fade in rather than simply pop into existence. I can then take these keyframes and copy them onto each layer that's tied to a footprint. They even allow me to speed up that effect by either pushing them together so that instead of it going, coming in, fading in over one or two seconds, it's more to about a half a second. And I also put one at the end so that the feet will also fade out. After I've done that, then I can page through the video here, and you can see I'm just trying to make sure that everything looks roughly the way I want it to before I think about uh, exporting it. So I page through it a few times just to kind of give it a rough look. And after I think it all looks great, I will then export it to Media Encoder, which is just the easy way of me rendering it into an MP4 file so that anybody can watch it. And I can also use it to check to see if the animation is playing too quickly or too slowly, or if a certain part, like a footprint, comes in at a wrong time, anything like that. So with all the animations, I kept them, I tried to aim to keep them about six seconds long, and I wanted them to have this perfect loop about them so that they could, you could sit there and watch them over and over a few times. <laughs> and that's about the final product. Here's some of the final animations. Uh, I'm really happy looking at all of these, and it's even better when you scan the designs and you see them playing right in front of you. I highly encourage everyone attending to download the free Art of Vive app and scan the designs yourself. It's really something else to see the cards come to life. As you walk through the art show on the left, I included a QR code that will take you directly to the Art of Vive app on the App Store. And again, I highly recommend that if you check out the show to download the app and give each poster a scan. It's almost kind of like reminds me of the, the paintings in Harry Potter, how they kind of come to life. <laughs> so it was a really cool effect. For the future, I'm mostly going to be looking for work starting in Fargo. I don't uh, like moving far away from home, but I also have lived in North Dakota my whole life, so a change of scenery might not be that bad. Hopefully someplace that doesn't have as, much, as many flooding problems in the spring <laughs> would probably be a good start. So... I just want to say thanks for watching, and you can use the QR code right now to download the Art of Vive app before heading over to the reception, but I believe before that we have some questions. We have questions. Ooh. Yes, Jared. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for tuning in, everybody. Um, and my first question is, what is your go-to Adobe program? My go-to Adobe program... It was, I would say, Illustrator at first, but I am kind of dipping into Photoshop because mm -hmm. I was using the tarot cards originally were made in Illustrator, but I feel like they would have been easier to uh, have drawn better mm -hmm. inside Photoshop. But 
if I did use it in Photoshop, I wouldn't be able to manipulate all the different layers like that. So I would say Illustrator for most of it, I would say. Okay, Illustrator. I, well, since your title was drawn in, yeah. would, I guess what was your most influential class from VCSU then? Uh, definitely uh, the digital illustration class when I made the tarot mm -hmm. cards. It was uh, really cool exploring all the different stuff like that, turning into having just developing an art style and all that was really cool. So I think it was something that really clicked with me. So uh, I would have to say that, yeah, the digital illustration class is definitely where it kind of started. Digital illustration. Do you ever miss the traditional with pencil? Just Yeah, I took drawing one with you, I think, mm -hmm. like my freshman year. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do like still drawing with pencil and paper. So, um, but I think it's, it's kind of, Illustration is this way of taking those drawings and then kind of putting them onto a computer and then kind of, uh, I don't know, like advertising them, I guess you could say. Yep. Nope. So. Completely get. And folks who are tuning in, there is a QR code that you can ask a question. Make sure to use your phone to type in any questions you would like to give for Jared. And I still have a couple more myself. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to any student looking, coming here to Valley City State University? About like digital design, it, digital or just design, in general? and just in general, yes. Um, hmm. What would I tell somebody? I would say definitely go after what you like because I started going into like arts at first, and I think that kind of led into finding me finding what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like you can continue using like your hobbies. Like I was in band, and so coming to VSCSU for band stuff was really cool. Um, we do have a concert tomorrow, mm -hmm. <laughs> a subtle plug there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, you can, I would say just pursue what you really like and it's probably going to naturally just kind of happen here. Per so. Perfect. And here's a nice one. What is your dream job? My dream job? Oh man. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, I haven't thought that about that in a while. Um, Hmm. I would say that it would be cool. I think there's just a lot of stuff that I, maybe not specifically a dream job, but there's stuff that I wouldn't mind trying, like going mm -hmm. to some place and doing like screen printing, printing and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or going to a place and making designs to see like what I would enjoy more. Yeah. So I think that it's kind of like, I don't know exactly, but I know it would have to be something probably with design as <laughs> you could probably insinuate. So, but I just kind of wanted to try some stuff first, I sure. guess. So which gets into what is a medium you would love to try that now you're graduating? A medium I would like yeah, to try? Yeah, like further, would you like to go further into animation or try s more screen printing, heat press? I would definitely like to try like heat, print, heat press stuff more, like mm -hmm. turning some of my other works into, into like different stuff. Like we were talking about taking the advanced research poster with the birds and mm -hmm. turning that into like stickers and things like that. Yeah. So... I think that there's like a lot of different, like I could research a few ways about like turning, taking my work and putting it into like a new medium. Sure. So um, I would say I would just have to, I'd probably be messing around with that. I would mind doing some more animations, things like that. Sure. I found it very interesting. There's, I, I basically scratched the surface with After Effects animating. So there's like so much you can do. And I wouldn't also mind doing some more video editing, maybe mm -hmm. not like just animation, but sure. like I do like uh, editing videos too. It's been really cool. Cool. That, so. I mean, that's important as a designer. It's not just... It's not just one thing. It's, it's you gotta... Multi. Yeah. Talented. It's a good way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what form of design are you looking to find a job in? What form of design? Well, hmm, form of design... I think that would tie back in with my exploring, like doing different, like I could go do like pressing, uh, heat pressing and screen printing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't know exactly if there's like a favorite one that I have right now off the top of my head, but I definitely have like finding places would be interesting to see, just to see what is out there. Cause I'm sure there's more that I still don't even know exists. So yeah, it's a very big industry. So I would have to start exploring it a bit more before I could give a single sure. answer. No, completely get and what skills do you want to improve next in digital design? I think I would like to do more illustrating mm -hmm. and kind of make more of my own kind of style, having something like that. And then 
I thought it'd be cool if I had like some kind of like a website where people could go and they could buy like stickers and stuff like that of design thing like that, order t-shirts and stuff like that. So I think that would be probably like one of the main things I'd like to do, I guess, give him an idea. Okay. Or at least it's like a, a one of the ideas I kind of like to mess around with in my head. <laughs> And this is a good question. What will you miss most about BCSU? Oh, what will I miss most? I think I'm going to miss the people the most because, you know, you always make like a ton of friends going to like mm -hmm. schools and school and work and everything like that. And then you change and then you're going to lose contact with those people. Um, but I think that, yeah, the people like in band and everything, it's just such a cool community. So <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get that kind of huge kind of scale going into like a job or anything like that. But uh, I think definitely like the people. Mm -hmm. So once they're all split up and go our own ways, is hopefully try to keep in touch. <laughs> which is important that, yes, we do want you to keep in touch, Jared, <laughs> which yeah. is very important. And just as much as what is your musical instrument you play? And I'm <laughs> <laughs> I play bassoon, which is uh, – I don't know how to explain it without – I would need like a picture or something, but – it's like a really long bass clarinet or a clarinet, mm -hmm. I guess, that's like si I hold it sideways and there's like a piece of metal that sticks out and I put my reed on that and then it, I blow air through it. <laughs> so you get to perform your last time tomorrow. Yeah, I do. And this is like your last talk. Gosh, it's a little bittersweet right now. Yeah, it kind of is. I was telling you beforehand how... We, every year you get to play at graduation, and I always thought that pomp and circumstance, the normal graduation song, is kind of depressing because <laughs> it feels really bittersweet. Like, yeah, it's triumphant, and you got done and everything, but at the same time, it's, like, really sad almost because mm -hmm. that's, like, now you got to go do something else. It's, so It's the next part of your journey. That's yeah. what you have to think about. Yeah. Um, let's see. And who... Who would be your dream client to work for? Ooh, that's a good one. A dream client to work for? It's like company or product or even a show. A company or product or a show. Um, company or product. Hmm. I, 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 I don't know exactly specifically because I have done like, mm -hmm. I've done stuff for obviously for organizations and for, and we have done like fake, um, kind of practice runs of making like packaging and stuff for a product and things like that. So I kind of mostly dipped my toes in everything. Mm -hmm. So I'd say most the most experience I have done though is working with people because I did the I did the library in town mm -hmm. and we're in my current graphic design class we're working on working with the Barnes County Soil Conservation District. Mm -hmm. So um, working with people has been really good. So I guess anything that really – I like to work with people. So anything along the lines with that would always be more I, – I think I'd enjoy it a lot more also. So it's pretty open of, like, yeah. get to the right person. Yeah. And this is also very important. What is your ideation process like, and how do you arrive at how the final design should look like? So obviously it depends from project to project. Mm -hmm. But – Sometimes I'll have like an idea in mind about maybe something that I've seen before that I kind of like want to mimic in a way, or I could like mimic and I could take it in a direction that I, I can think of. Sometimes my, my best ideas will, I'll be sitting there and I'll be messing around with trying to like make something that I think is interesting and I'll just kind of stumble upon something that's kind of interesting or cool to look at, or it's like a cool little element that I can add to it. So some of it's, some of it's random, <laughs> but, uh, I think it's more like the exploration is kind of like not the randomness. It's more like exploring and seeing like uh, what there is out there and seeing if like what I could create that's kind of like it. Sure. In a way. And then this one actually came from your family. How uh -oh. did your family inspire you into what you create today? Hmm. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, hmm. I think we've always had a bit of artisticness mm -hmm. in my in my family. We have like, I'm thinking of we have like some drawings, or I think I can't remember if it was drawing or like watercolor or painting in our house that we have like frames of framed mm -hmm. works and stuff that we have in our house. So it's always been kind of like a little bit artsy in our house. Not like it's super anything crazy, but you know we always like sit down and do something every so often. So 
So you came from an arts family. Yeah. That's awesome. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, this is what was or what is your favorite art or design project from Valley City State University? My favorite project mm -hmm. was, yeah, it was definitely my tarot cards because as I was working on them, I could just feel how like as I was working on them, mm -hmm. I kind of like started to do we want to do more and more with it mm -hmm. I was like oh this looks good but I feel like I had this idea where I can kind of snowball it into something more sure. so that was kind of like that first like buzz kind of feel mm -hmm. that I felt with it so I think that's like what I strive for <laughs> sure and can you tell us a little bit more about the current project you're working on for the Barnes County Soil Conservation District okay uh well we we just met with them today, actually, and we've been uh, uh, developing a brand identity mm -hmm. system with them. So going over things like the logo, we made a, ro a new logo for them, going over the typography used in the logos, the symbolism, uh, color schemes, things like that. Um, what else? We can and then using all those elements to kind of the, the, ident the brand identity uh, mm -hmm book that we kind of gave them sure. is kind of showing them how to use things like how to structure things on pages or if putting the logo on a picture instead of just like a white background or something like that kind of looking to see how you can use different elements from the logo to kind of add to um like a paper things like that and picking things apart so you kind of get this overall unified mm -hmm. kind of look ah. so we've been working with them on making uh some a new system for them Ooh, can, so, so Hoping by the end of the semester to be all ready to go that we'll see. Yeah, we have a few things that we're going to be editing, I think, next week. Okay. So, um, but it's, uh, yeah, I'd say it's, it's like, I'd say it's like 90% done-ish. Okay. We just have a few things that we have to change up still. And meeting them today, they really liked how it was going. They felt like we went above and beyond. So that was really nice to hear that from them. Yeah, that's that's also a nice thing about design is when you actually, mm -hmm. when, when you actually exceed their expe somebody's expectations is always really cool and it's a nice experience. Yeah, no, that is very important, especially in just hearing that from our digital design program. I mean, you're graduating and yeah. we had Bailey just about two weeks ago on talking with her yeah. experience. You both are the flagship for our digital design <laughs> program. Yeah. <laughs> So it's very important of being above and beyond. Yeah. And it's it's one thing I'm just going to miss seeing you in the CFA, Jared. Just <laughs> going above and beyond, and that's important. Um, would you ever teach design? You like, I mean, we're going mm. through like, you create it for a client, but would you ever come back and go, I might want to teach it? Teaching design. I know this is a teaching school. You know, a lot of education majors and mm -hmm. stuff like that here. Um, I think I do like teaching people stuff. I think I definitely, I, I like to explain to people because then it's like I get to see them go off and do it and seeing them succeed is kind of like seeing how it kind of feels like I'm succeeding in a way because yep. it's like I helped them get to where they are and now, now we're both benefiting, I guess. So it's always cool to see that and not just design and things like that, just really in anything in music, things like that is always cool. Um, yeah, I think that maybe not, not, maybe not in a professional circumstance, like at a college, I don't know if I would go through a, that's a lot of, that's a lot of work, <laughs> respect to all the education majors out there, so, uh, you have to get an MFA, yes, yeah, yep, and that's a lot of work, but you can always, like, when you have friends, it's like, oh, you want to just know how to do this, it's, yeah, it's just simple, just as much as showing how to play an instrument, it's yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So that gets into a, another good question, which is you started four years ago. You were back when we were start. We're in McCarthy and yeah. then we trans, we built a new center for the arts. Yeah. How has been your experience the past year and a half now? Yeah, it has been a year and a half in the center for the arts. Well, uh, the Center for the Arts is really nice. Uh, I especially like the music hall and everything. It's it's really mm -hmm. it's really nice, and it's cool to see all the customization that they have with the sound and everything, and all the curtains so that they can mess with the video and or not video, the audio and everything mm -hmm. in that. So it's really cool. All the I know there's like in front of between the band room and the arts, there's that there's uh, the wall that has like the diagram mm -hmm. on it. So as you walk by, you can kind of see it come together and then you've walked the other way. It's a whole different image. Yes. I think that's a really cool little touch that they added. The, uh, 
the art show room is really nice. Uh, it's nice and very spacious. Lots of room to work with. Um, all the lights very. You can actually mm. you can definitely customize it a whole lot to yeah. your heart's content. Um, what do you think? Uh, I never used any of the of the practice rooms, but I know there's lots of those. And the pr the the design classroom. The digital design classroom. Yeah, the digital design classroom. We have some nice computers in there. Mm -hmm. And from what I see, we're actually getting like we have some ones from when we first started. Mm -hmm. And then on the one side, there's actually newer ones that we mm -hmm. have that are like. Woo, miles better. <laughs> it's how we're keeping up with the changing technology. Yeah. And so it's really cool because it's like, yeah, you have this nice fancy building, but it's also still continuously kind of getting better. And evolving, as I Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And there's lots of room and showing, like, um, I know we have, like, some, I think there's photography. There's, there's like, wall, the walls when you go up the stairs, there's, like, lots of room to pin up stuff on the mm -hmm. walls and everything so you could show off student work and all that. Yep. It's really cool, so... So, ooh, this is a good question, because are you a Mac or PC person? I am a PC person <laughs> at heart. <laughs> I understand, like, where Mac comes from and how it's used for more design mm. and stuff like that, but <laughs> are you booing back there? <laughs> but I, I, I think I still like PCs more just because mm. I've always, like, we, growing up, we always had the family computer and it was PC, so mm -hmm. I've always been like using PC, so I'm really used to it a lot more. And I always think that, think that, I know you can use like, I'm thinking of, this is probably getting a little nitpicky, but I'm like thinking of like an Apple mouse. I never really cared for how Apple mice are. They're just like that thin little piece of plastic. And I don't really, I like it like the, like a Windows mouse. You have like okay. fills up your hand and everything. Okay. That's very nitpicky, I know. <laughs> but, and you could always just plug that into a, a Mac yeah. and be whatever, so. Um, but I can definitely see how uh, Mac is usually used more for design. Mm -hmm. But I think that there really isn't a whole lot of performance-wise difference between a Mac and a PC. So I, I, I don't see the difference, but I just prefer PC in general because I'm just okay. used to it. You're just used to it. No. And I'm a Mac person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I just prefer. But everybody has their own preferences, but it's yeah. a good question. Which is also, what is your favorite color and why? My favorite color? Yes. It's red. It's in my name. It's who I am. Let me tell you. <laughs> Which is why you're wearing a red shirt. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. 100%. <laughs> we were talking about how it's like, oh, if this was like a green screen, I could be like a... But instead of green, it's the maroon color. Mm -hmm. I could be like a floating head right now and everything. <laughs> so... No, and it's important to think red's important, like VCSU's color. Yeah, it all lines up. It all lines up. <laughs> And, ooh, this is another good question. Do you enjoy making works manually using traditional processes like screen printing or prefer fully digital using the Wacom tablets? Hmm, I think that I'm thinking of, like, when we were painting in Photoshop, it was, mm -hmm. like, it was nicer to go straight from onto, like, the tablet and um, kind of using that as, like, the starting point. But... I did talk about it in my sh in my presentation about how I feel like that you can get a better I like the hand drawn feel of of things mm -hmm. more and I feel like if you go straight from uh from nothing to onto the laptop or onto a, a tablet and draw mm -hmm. you can get the similar effect but I think that like you can get more of like your personal movement and everything sure. out of drawing just on paper and everything but you can get a pretty similar product by going straight onto a tablet and something like that. Yeah, there, I mean, there is that difference, that feel. Yeah, which there is. It's, it's like, I, I I have done digital myself, but I prefer that traditional. I like getting my hands dirty. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like I'd be drawing and, uh, like, I draw an illustrator, mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd have to draw out a line first and then let go, and then it would pop up, which is what I didn't really care for sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, But if I was doing something like that, then I can go back and I can click on that line and edit it however yeah. much I want which is something that Photoshop can't do. Photoshop would be, I would just have to have the right brush right away and then draw the line. And it would draw as I do it, but yeah, I think Illustrator would be like, kind of that more, if you wanted to go back and change it about stuff or ma manipulate it, so. And that's the one nice thing with digital platforms. You can hit that Command Z and it oh, all yes. undoes and you can fix there's, stuff. There's no Command Z on paper, sadly. <laughs> you can't just Command Z. You gotta sit there and erase it mm -hmm. and then you got all this stuff on your paper you gotta swipe off and then you're getting graphite on your hand. Yeah. 
but it's a labor of love. <laughs> yep, that, and that's the biggest thing, like in drawing, and especially of taking from the traditional sense, putting into the digital. Yeah, it's seeing the connection of what you can do and of how you illustrated even being back in 2D design and I put restrictions onto certain projects yes. like oh you can't use black can't in use a black. Halloween project. Yeah. Which I know you did not like that project. I did not like it and I I didn't cheat but I definitely was like working with some dark dark like purples and mm -hmm. things like that to mimic it. But that's there like with a client you never know what you're going to get yeah. your hand into. Yeah. <laughs> and it's important I think with the with the real world experiences you've dealt with here, Jared, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, what advice would you give to the current art, art and digital design majors as they're going through their journey here at Valley City State? What advice would you give them? I would say to focus on what you like, but be open to anything that you might have to, like say you mm -hmm. get a project and it's just really not your thing, but you should definitely try and give mm -hmm. it your all and kind mm -hmm. of, Make sure you give it a fair shot because it may not work at first, but maybe as you're working on it, you suddenly kind of hit a stride on it. So I would say definitely keep open, but definitely pursue like what specifically is makes your work unique about you, something like that. So, Which is important. Mm -hmm. um, with your tarot cards when you animated it, about an estimate of how many hours did that take? I'd say... Hmm. Some cards were quicker than others, I'll admit. Mm. Um, but some of them, I would say that most of the cards took anywhere between maybe like an hour and a half to two hours. Mm. Luckily, I, again, I edited a lot of the process for it. Um, I ended up going back with the full card and changing a bunch of things. So, um, but it's uh it was kind of like a process, and I, I I'm like my own worst critic. So I'll be sitting there and I'll watch it and I'll be like. Hmm, but it could be better yeah. <laughs> or something like that. So then I want to go back and I change something. So I'd say anywhere from like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And so. 22 cards. And 22 cards. So and almost, which is kind of important where that time management, especially in the digital design program of how many projects. and Yeah, definitely. Working on that alongside of continuing to do classes was, mm -hmm. was fun. So you got to space it out and especially have time to even the production side, printing it off and cutting and putting it on the boards and everything is and ha and um, hanging everything up. Yep. It's all of a process you got to take into account. So it's very time consuming. But the yeah. final product, it's like it's really nice to look at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and especially since you had to balance your time here. I remember when you first started, you were undecided and then you switch after taking a couple art classes thank you <laughs> yeah um, and what would you tell someone who is undecided here at valley city state university what would you say to them of like okay you don't know what you're going to do what would you tell them to, what to do well i would say think of like a hobby or something that you like like i like drawing so i liked the arts and things like that so i, I was taking drawing and i don't think i took drawing too but i did take the 2d design mm -hmm. things like that and i was kind of like still stepping into things that I liked, but I also was taking, I, I also heard the design and I always heard about things like Photoshop and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say listen for anything that kind of like catches your ear, anything that sounds interesting to you, um, but also like focus on what you enjoy. So if you like music, then maybe you should be a music major, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or you can get real specific and I think you can do the university studies. You can do basically mm -hmm. a combination of whatever you want. You don't have to be a specific thing. Yep. So. I think that's a nice thing here at Valley yeah. City State. As a student, you have so many options that mm -hmm. whether you're going into just digital design or you decide I want to be a minor in this or do the university studies, we, as I think the faculty staff, we listen and <laughs> yeah. we help get you to your end goal. Yeah, definitely. So is that going to be something? I know you said, is there anybody in particular professors you're really going to miss? Or just a section, if you just if you don't want to say, prefer, I, I get it. Uh, I think I'll miss everybody in like the CFA. Oh, okay. So both oh. the music and the art, because it's just great to work with everybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess that kind of encompasses everybody. Yeah, <laughs> just real quickly, just not so I don't accidentally point out favorites or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> no student has a favorite professor on this campus. No, yeah, but I think in a sense, 
you experience so much is being an arts person <laughs> experience both sides and it really shows how well-rounded you are jared yeah and even not even i have to think that even not even not even all those professors at the cfa like i've taken some other science mm -hmm. classes and some of the other professors like from I, I haven't really met a professor that i like absolutely just despise the classes or anything like that so yeah i think everything is pretty enjoyable if you can at least like apply yourself to it mm -hmm. which is important here yes absolutely so as we get this is a good question what are you looking forward to the most after graduating after graduating hmm i'm uh, i'd say i'm looking forward to i got friends back in fargo and stuff and we talked about getting like an apartment and things like that so i think that i'm looking forward to like moving out i guess Sorry, mom and dad, I'm looking forward to moving out <laughs> and uh, kind of exploring stuff in Fargo mm -hmm. is kind of what I'm probably most looking forward to. So I know in your last for future plans, you were like saying staying close to North Dakota. I mean, how far away would you go, Jared? <laughs> At most, where would I go? I think the farthest I would go is probably like the Twin Cities Okay. to start. If, if I were to do that, I'd probably start the Twin Cities, and then if it's going well there, then I'd maybe branch up to branch open to moving more places. Okay. But I feel like I would be pretty content with finding something uh, up here in the northern Midwest. So the I think there's plenty of stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of North Dakota and our long winters. Yeah, okay. and our great springs where we turn into a, a great lake, <laughs> as I always like to say. Yes. Get to drive home on the weekend and I look out to the field and then there's like water. <laughs> yes. It's it's such a beautiful time. It's yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um let me see if any other questions that we have. And it looks like no we do not. Um do you have any final statements you would like to give, Jared, to the audience here? Um, well, I guess I'd just like to thank the school and all the faculty and everybody because it's been a pretty great four years here. So um, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say. Like, it's just thank you, and I really enjoyed my time here. So I am looking forward to uh, finally graduating and getting out there. Mm -hmm. So... We'll just be missing you at, in the CFA and I know probably the marketing department yeah. and across McFarland, the road science building. Um, yeah, it's very bittersweet. Yeah, the That's band is going to be missing their bassoon. There's going <laughs> to yes. be no more, unless they get another one. I don't know if there's another one coming in this fall, but there's going to be no more bassoon in the Aww. band. And we did get <laughs> one more quick question. Oh, man. What is your favorite stroke weight? <laughs> my favorite stroke weight oh man a hundred i want to just cover the whole page in page. one single move <laughs> and with the stroke weight it's meaning like a how thick the line for yeah. folks on the audience <laughs> it's yeah so. it's just like how thick the line is when you when you draw it and not so illustrator. obviously it depends on for an actual answer it depends on project to project mm -hmm. sometimes like I, I made, we made a comic strip for my, my other illustration class and I started off with kind of thinner strokes, but then I kind of made it more bold as I went along. Yeah. So, and I kind of liked how it made it look. Sure. So. No, that's awesome. Just kind of depends. It <laughs> depends. And I guess maybe that's the best thing for anybody thinking of the digital design. You have to be prepared to change your style. Yes. To make it to market or brand identity yeah. for anybody. And... Okay, one more question. One more, one more question. question. What is your least favorite font? That is actually a good question. Oh, my least favorite <laughs> font. Wingdings. <laughs> I can't read it. You can't read? No. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking I'm going to say Comic Sans, but I think Comic Sans is comically bad. Comically bad. I think that it's got great comedic value if you use it and stuff. And, okay. So I think it's got, it's the so bad it's good kind of like mentality about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't think of a single use for wingdings in my life. No. Neither can, <laughs> no. It's more like, I don't even know if that would count as, would that count as a font? I mean, it's more symbols than anything. It's symbols, yeah. Hmm. So, no. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good question. And it looks like, I think we, 
We will stop grilling Jared. Uh, <laughs> about now, but now I gotta go to the reception. You can Please grill me in real life. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the important part, folks. You guys should come over in about fifteen minutes to the CFA lobby. Jared will be there smiling. He will not be playing bassoon. If you're looking for that, you have to come tomorrow to the CFA Performance yes. Hall. Yes. And yes, do support the concert band. It's supposed to be a really amazing experience, folks. Folks. Um, that's the one thing I love working in the CFA. There's always something going on. Um, so, again, thank you, Jared. I will miss you as you walk across the stage in about two weeks. Yeah, two weeks already. Oh, my gosh. Did you get your rope? No, I was going to get it, like, tomorrow. So. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. You need a – there's some other people already have it. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's the people. I, I should have got it this morning, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I didn't. No, you, you I was making sure this was all ready to go. <laughs> That's more important. Yes. <laughs> I got time tomorrow. <laughs> you got time tomorrow before the concert. So, folks, again, Jared, thank you. Uh, come over, CFA lobby in about 14, well, give it about 10 minutes. The food's probably out there. See Jared. Bring your cell phones so you can see the animations and ask questions to Jared and even to us art faculty, we're more than welcome to answer it. And as we wrap up this wonderful 2023 spring, we go from Jared's show to the Juried Art Exhibition from May 1st to May 5th, which stay tuned for that. There'll be a walkthrough and an award ceremony on May 4th, which you will want to tune in. And after that, there will be one last show in the CFA Gallery, which is the North Dakota University System Traveling Exhibition that will open on May 10th from 4 to 6 p.m., the reception, and it will be up through June. So, folks who are tuning in, thank you for tuning in, whether you're in your car, your office, you're just waiting for the reception out in the CFA lobby. Thank you, be kind, and see you all soon.